All right, guys, what's up, and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. So today, I mean, a couple people already told me I should not make this fucking video because it's not worth the time and effort, and it's not worth what you think right now, okay? Judging by the title, some of you may have clicked on it, some of you may have avoided it. It's not what you think. So I have a lot of people that watch out for me, and there are people that still go to Chase Smith's channel, which is he has a new one, and they watch his stuff, and they're waiting. They wait for him to fucking say something about me. They wait for something to fucking come up about me because they want to protect me. They want me to be like, look, here it is. I don't want you to fucking get blindsided. Here's what's going on. And they want me to make reply videos. They still want me to bury this fucking guy. Even though he went away, the real fact that he came back, they want him buried. They want him gone. And they look to me to do it sometimes. And you know, I'm like, fuck it. You know, it is what it is. I don't want to deal with it anymore. So I get the video the other day, last night. And uh, David, thanks for the video. He says, you might want to see this. And at first, I was like, I don't want to watch this. And I'm like, well, Dave took the time to send it to me. Let me see what it is. And I click on it. And now this is, you know, Chase, pay attention to what I'm going to say from this point on, please. Now, Chase has been down on his luck big time lately. Now, I don't know if this is a trolling thing. If it isn't, you know, he's, he's trolling me and, and he tricked me, then fuck it, whatever. You know, I, I, I'm dumb then. But... Chase decided to pull out of his bodybuilding competition based on the fact that he's having a hard time with financial means, his girlfriend, him and his girlfriend split, he's traveling, he's doing all these things, he's depressed, he's having, you know, all these issues, and he's saying, you know, he can't do a 12-week cut and he can't get it done. So he's going to pull out, get his head together, and then uh, do a show later on in the year. There's some more shows later on in the year. Now here's my message to Chase. Don't pull out of this show. Okay, I'm not saying that because I want you to fail and look like an asshole. I'm saying that because I don't want you to pussy out and miss this show. Right now, it sounds like you don't have a lot of positive things going on in your life. And it sounds to me like maybe the gym, bodybuilding in general, is the only positive thing in your life. Okay, so take that away. You're now left with sitting in what appears like, I guess it's uh, your living room, wherever you film your videos, and wallowing in the fact that, you know, financial situations, the new job, which has got you all, you know, frazzled, traveling. Um, which traveling I don't see as a bad thing unless you're, you know, you're in prep. Let me shut this message off. Um, traveling and the girlfriend thing, okay? Now, I'm here to tell you that if you give up on this show that you planned and you put it out there to the public that you're going to do this show, made a big deal about it and you wanted to prove to everyone that, you know, you can do it. Now, pulling out of the show, you're going to regret this. Trust me. You, this is going to follow you forever. Um, I'll put this out there first. Victor Martinez jailed for like eight, nine months. Sister murdered, lost his restaurant, still made it to the stage when he came back within a year. Okay, still. All that shit, you don't think that that's a lot harder on someone than what you're going through right now? You know, there are champions like Dorian Yates, hospitalized for bleeding ulcers in his stomach, a torn tricep where the tendon is barely holding on. He was in the hospital like three weeks before the Olympia, made it to the Olympia to defend his title. Jay Cutler. I don't know whether it was a, a flu or it was a food poisoning. Puking his guts out before one of the Olympias. I believe it was the first one he beat Ronnie at. He beat Ronnie at. He was on the way to the thing trying to figure out whether he should go or not. Just pulling over on the side of the road and puking. And he still got to the Olympia. And that's when he beat Ronnie at. The point I'm trying to make is right. everything seems the darkest right before the light shines. And what's happening to you right now sounds like it sucks. But, you know, I take these guys and I mention them and you're like, yeah, Jerry, but they're pros and they're fucking this and that. Well... Chase, I've been in the same position that you're in, only worse. And I'm going to give you just two examples of what that is. In 2009, I well, I moved in 2005 to Maryland with my girlfriend. Okay, that was I moved away from my family and friends, had no one but her here. Okay, in 2009 we split up. Everybody thought for sure I would move back to Rhode Island, lick my wounds, you know, put everything back together and heal. I stayed in Maryland. It was just me. I had a couple of good friends. My best friend turned out to not be my best friend while I was here. I was getting ready for the Pittsburgh when this happened. I was about six weeks, seven weeks out from the Pittsburgh. I was well into that prep when this happened. Now, that breakup brought, I had to find a place to move within two weeks, okay? <clears throat> I was essentially going to be homeless in two weeks, and I had two dogs, Nico and Bruno. Okay, on top of that, she was shutting off the phone, which was in both of our names. It was technically her name. And at the same time, she was taking the car, which the lease was in her name. We had two cars. The lease was in her name and my name. She didn't want her name on it. Couldn't change it. It was going to be taken away. So now I had no place to live, no phone, no car. Okay? And the bank account that was in both of our names, 
guess what? There was no money left in that after the breakup either. And there was nothing I could do about it because the money, their, her name was on the bank account. I had $1,000 cash, okay, that I put aside for gear. That's what I put it aside for, gear for a show. $1,000 cash. That's what I had to work with in two weeks to get my life situated. I didn't miss a single fucking workout, and I didn't miss a single fucking meal, and I made all my food. I didn't even really know how to cook some of the foods because she had cooked the food for me. I had to learn how to cook them, too. Never missed those workouts. Did it all within two weeks. And there were times that I wanted to pull out. Absolutely. I hit up Dave Paul Stanella from Raising the Bar fame and said, Dave, you know, you know, so many, it was like four weeks before North Americans and your girls split, you know, and you got through it and you got there. Like, what, what was it like? Is it worth it? Should I do it? Dave said, fuck yeah. He's like, don't let that girl be the reason why your world collapses. You know, you have to move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm still messed up from my allergies and the, and the cold. And uh, you have to move on and you have to do it. Don't let her be the one that brings you down. Don't just sit there and wallow. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Jeez. And, you know, there were many times where I almost threw in the towel. Many times. And I had my buddy Rick telling me, you know, go. And I had Lavroni telling me, look, I, mean, I ripped my fucking peck off the bone and couldn't even train. And within three months, I was on stage at the Olympia getting third place. You know, I'm listening to these things saying, okay, I can do it. And I got to the stage. Okay, the lightest one in that class plays fourth in the Pittsburgh, which I don't know if you're aware, but that's one of the, the, the best shows in the whole fucking country. Fourth in the heavyweight class, met Carrie, and things completely changed because I didn't give up. Okay? I wanted to several times, but I didn't. I gutted it out. This past year when we were having these arguments, my dad was dying of cancer. I mean, dying of cancer. Fix this fucking camera. Dying of cancer with the cancer treatments. Okay? I didn't know what to make of anything at that point. And... That was eight weeks out from my show. What actually turned out to be my last show. I tore my pec, okay, and at the same time threw my back and my hip out to where there was so much pain I couldn't move or pose, okay? Still made it to the show right in my best shape and conditioning ever. So many times I told Carrie I wanted to throw in the towel and say, just go up there next in Rhode Island and be next to my dad. And my dad was like, do what you got to do, do what you got to do, then get up here afterwards. And still got to the stage. Then the week after that, Decided, oh, fuck it, I'm going to give up. I'm not going to do the Sean Ray. Bloated myself up with fucking pizza, McDonald's, and fucking ice cream. Bruno jumps out of the tub. I throw my back out again so I can barely stand. And then Thursday night before the show, decide, I'm going to pull it together and I'm going to fucking do the show because I said I'm going to. After talking to Sean Ray and Kevin LaFroni and then giving me that fucking, this pump up fucking talk that I'm giving you right now. Saying, look, you know, you don't know. The guy that beat you in Delaware could show up here. You can go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Maybe you'll beat him this time. But the bottom line was I said I was going to do it. I set my goal. And I was letting myself down. And I don't want to let myself down. I knew that I was the fucking warrior that had done so many things throughout the years that I could do this too. And I did. So what I'm trying to explain to you is there's always shit that comes up. If you're looking for that time where... You know, it's not going to be that hard and not that difficult. Fuck, that's never going to happen, okay? Let's just speak fact. Unless you hit the fucking lottery and marry a fucking Playboy bunny, you're always going to have fucking money and girl issues. That's just how it's going to be, okay? In job situations, fuck it, it happens. I lost my job in 2007, three weeks before the Lehigh and the Pittsburgh. Where's the Lehigh? Whatever it was. Anyways, I didn't fucking give up. I continued my fucking diet, continued my training, went to Pittsburgh, and then fucking got second and qualified for nationals in the heavyweight class of the Lehigh two weeks later. You know what I mean? Like, you have to fucking gut it out. That's what this sport is about. If you're not willing to gut it out, someone else is, they're going to fucking beat you, period. So now you understand a little bit about, you know, you poke fun at me for a while about what kind of person I am, what kind of person these other bodybuilders are that you make fun of. Because they've gone through way worse shit than you have, and so have I, and still made it to the stage. My advice to you is, honestly, don't pull out of the show. Give it 110% of what you got. Don't sit home and wallow in the sorrow of the shit that's happened to you. Take the only positive thing which you seem to like, which is the gym, which you're still going to go to fucking anyways. And you're still going to follow your macros anyways. You're still going to do this shit anyways. It's not like you're going to stop doing it all and then fucking revamp and then later on start it all. You're still going to do it. But you have to get past that mental barrier of the other shit that's going on and just do it. Plain and simple. You, if you want to be that warrior and you're that warrior that can fight through fucking anything, now is the time to show it. And you put it out there for the world to see and then pull it back. I mean, what do you think is going to happen next time? You know, if you pull out now, you haven't been on stage yet. If you pull out now, what makes you, next time, if you got, you know, money issues or girl issues or, if you, God forbid, your father gets ill or something, what's going to happen then? Don't put it off. Get it done. And no matter what, don't quit. Buy what you're training at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. 
But don't fight, Chase. Just get it done. www.bouncertraining.com is the blog and where don't quit until your dead bicep and we're out.